If you're a Bricks user and you're not using Advanced Thema, you're missing out. And let's be honest about it, probably if you're watching this video, you already are using it. And you're interested in this new feature for a CSS framework that's built directly into Advanced Thema. Now, quickly, before I start taking a look at this, please be aware that this is the beta version. This is the pre-release. When I release this, it will be available. So you may see some differences in between what I cover and what you'll see in the final version. But this should give you at least a good head start on how everything works, where everything is, and how you can use it to get started. So with that being said, let's just jump over into Bricks and take a quick look at how we set everything up. So I've got Advanced Thema installed and set up to the way that I like it, and we've got a blank page in front of us. So how do we get access to the CSS framework and what features does it bring with it? It's very simple. We come up to the AT menu at the top and click, and there you'll see AT Framework, or as I like to call it, AT CSS. This is version 1.0, so things may change when you see the released version of this and afterwards. So what we need to do is we're going to click on it, and that will open up the Framework Settings section. Now, generally, you're only going to need to come in here one time, configure the things the way that you want, then you're pretty much going to hit the ground running. So let's take a quick look at the options that are here and how they impact the way in which you work. So let's go top to bottom. We've got our global CSS variables. These are standard variables for key components and key elements and key ways of setting things up inside any kind of design. So these are going to be like your buttons, your text, your typography, things like that, but also your grids, your spacing, and those kinds of things. So you can enable individual items here if you want to. I would generally recommend just enable them all. You can also open up any of these inside the manager itself. We'll come back to that in a moment. Then we've got our global colors. So this is where we can access a range of predefined color settings. So we can toggle all and we end up with five different kind of starter setting panels or color panels. We're just going to enable the AT framework. I'm not interested too much in these other ones. They'll just open up additional color palettes. You'll see how it works. Then we've got our global classes. Now, you're probably going to work with variables more than classes, but the classes do come in handy in useful different situations. And again, we'll take a quick look at that. And this, like I say, is just an introduction video. I will be covering this in more detail when the final version is released, and we'll kind of do a quick start getting up and running kind of guide to show you how you can use this in a bit more detail than I'll cover in this video. Then, like I say, with the global classes, let's say let's just toggle all of those on. Then we've got three key things down the bottom that are kind of useful. First of all, theme styles. Now, by default, when we take a look at our theme style inside Bricks, if we haven't created one, and this is a blank site, there's going to be nothing inside you. So we could create one, but let's make life easier by using the theme style option inside AT Framework. Just select it. We now have one available. I'll click and open this up. There's our AT Framework. And this now is going to use the variables and things like that that's part of the framework itself. So for example, if we come into General, you can see any settings will be set up inside you. Come into our Links. Things are set up inside there as well. Typography. Come into our Element section. Let's expand this out a little bit so we can see a bit more what's going on. So you can see this is using the variables that have been set up as part of our framework. So that's taken care of. Obviously, you can tweak this if you want to, but it makes more sense to make changes in a lot of situations inside the actual framework settings themselves, and that will ripple down to your theme style. Then you've got your advanced CSS style sheets. This is a dedicated style sheet where all global CSS declarations are stored and applied site-wide. So we want to enable that. And then you've got your advanced CSS recipes. Now, these recipes are basically groups of variables and things set up, and we can take advantage of those by just applying this one single CSS recipe or class. We can enable those. We'll take a look at it. There's only five in there at the moment, and I'm sure this will expand. And what I would love to see is the ability to connect this up to maybe a curated list of sort of community supplied recipes for various different things. That could be quite cool. So just something to bear in mind, Maxim. Once you've done all that, we'll hit Save, and we've set the basics up. So now we can close this down. Let's go out of our settings inside here. Now, we can come in and take a look at the CSS variables that's built directly into Bricks itself. And you'll see there's a range of options inside here for our classes and for our variables. But we're limiting what we can do if we use this method. You can still get access to them, but it's not anywhere near as powerful as the variable manager's part of Advanced Thema. So make sure you enable that if it's not enabled by default. So let's come out of this, and let's open up the variable manager. This now gives us 
kind of centralized location with the settings and so on for our variables. So you can see everything is broken down to our clamp settings. And these are the basics that everything else is kind of taken from. So our clamp units, our base font size, and so on. Then you've got your site options for your maximum width and your minimum width, those kinds of things, and a blog width. So you can set those up. And again, like I say, these are already transitioned over into your theme style. So for me, I don't use 1300 pixels. I prefer 1400 pixels or 1366 if you want to be on the careful side. And you can set your background color, your header height, all those kinds of things. And these are mapped to the theme style that we've selected to be imported by default inside the CSS settings. So once we set anything we want to change in there, we'll hit Save to Database. Job done. So you can see we've got our grids, everything set up inside here. Our spacing is set up. And as you can see, we've got a nice visual representation. And this is why it makes more sense to use the CSS Variable Manager as part of Advanced Thema over what we've got native to Bricks itself, because you can see the sort of visual representation of the spacing, the typography sizing, and so on. So inside here, you can set your own custom labels if you want to, your base, your base maximum, your small steps, and so on. And then we can choose the type scale. All the things you used to see in, in most setups when it comes to working with a framework. If you've used Core Framework, this is going to be very familiar to you. However, this is probably a little bit more stripped back than a lot of those. <clears throat> you see there's not tons and tons or hundreds of hundreds of different variables. You can add as much as you want in yourself. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But you can easily change these. We've got perfect fifth setup. Let's say you may want to go for the major third. You see that shows you the visual change. I want to go for octave, for example, which are much, much bigger changes. Set it to whatever you think is the right one for you and your design or whatever your kind of preference is. And you've also got then your padding, your gutter, and so on. So some various different options here. And again, if you want to add your own custom variables in, you can do that directly inside here. Create your own categories if you want to, or add them to existing categories if that makes sense. And then you've got the gap. Your typography settings, again, you can see there's your typography scale using that same kind of scales for the major third, golden ratio, and so on. So you can set what you want, create your own custom new scales if you want to. You've also got text, heading sizes. You know, you get the idea how this works. It may be a little different to what you're used to. You know, if you're coming from Core Framework, this is a little different. For example, the base value is set on small inside you, whereas I'm kind of used to medium being set as the base value. But again, you can modify this if that's how you prefer. And you can change all the labels to get exactly what you want. Buttons are predefined as well. You can see these tag into the color schemes that we've got using the variables and so on. So everything you'd expect inside GIF of variables and things are being sort of created with flexibility in mind. If you want to create a new category, you can simply come down and we'll say, I want to set a custom image ratio so I can take advantage of variables here as well. See that creates a category and all we need to do is give it a name first of all. So we'll say this is the 16 by nine, hit enter or return. And now we can add the, the value in. So we'll just do 16 dash nine. We'll add another one in, let's say four by three, for example. Well, we'll give it a name, get the idea. Once we're happy, made any changes, hit save the database, job done. Close this down. So now we can also take advantage of the color options inside you. So let's go and add in a simple section. And inside, let's come over to our color manager, which is at the top. There's our colors. And as you can see, the AT framework is now set as the default one. You can obviously set the ordinary default, which is the native ones inside Bricks itself. But it kind of sets itself up that AT framework is the one you've got to use. And again, you can add colors inside you. You can add shades and so on. So there's a lot of options we can tap into. If you hover over, you can see we can generate shades, custom shades, the number of shades that you want, light, dark, transparent shades, and so on. When I add complementary colors in, you can do that. And again, we can choose from pre sort of standard, complementary, split complementary, those kinds of things. Analogous, you can click and you see it'll give you the analogous colors based upon this primary color we set. And you can generate the colors from there should you want to. So these are the kind of color features that you're probably used to if you're working with the advanced themers color palette and how it operates. Good to see. Again, save the database if you make any changes and add more content. So now that we've seen how to get access to the variables, how to set things up, the colors and so on, let's see how it actually operates. Okay, so let's come back over, let's close this down. We've got a section, let's expand this out. And let's do like we would normally do. Let's create a simple kind of card layout. We'll come in and we'll add a block in. We'll just rename that to card. And inside our card, let's just expand this a little bit so we can see a bit better what we're doing. We'll just add in a heading. 
we'll add in an image, some text, and we'll add in a button. So everything you're kind of used to seeing. So let's just add a little bit of content in now so we've got something we can actually work with. So this is our first car set up. So now what we can do is we can take advantage of another of advanced themas settings. Let's right click on here. Let's say class converter and we'll set those. They're fine. We're not going to worry too much about the naming. Create our classes. We now have all our BEM naming applied to our card. Cool. So obviously the next thing we want to do is create a simple grid. So let's select our container, come over and set this to be grid. And now we can start to use those variables that are part of advanced theme CSS framework. So what you do now is we can click on the little V. So you can see that now shows us the grids and the gap. It's content aware, so it knows what context we're working with. So the first thing we want to do is put a gap in. So let's say we want to put in the AT container gap. We'll select it. Obviously, nothing's going to show because we only have one item. Let's come over to our grid template. Click our little V again. And let's say we want to put the AT grid 3 in. And there we go. We now have a three-row grid. And now we're using those variables built into the AT CSS framework. Makes it so easy. So you can see how easy that is. Now, if we want to duplicate this card, we now have three iterations of the card. And obviously, if we come in and let's say, for example, we choose the image, we'll come over to our style, we'll come over into our border. And from there, we'll add a border and we'll add a radius in. Again, we can take advantage of these options. So you can see we've got spacing, border, box, shadow. Let's say we want to put a border on there. Let's say medium. There you go. Everything now references that border. Simple as that. It's all pretty simple and straightforward and everything you're kind of used to. So we've seen the variable side of things and we've seen how easy it is to reference these. And like I say, if you're already used to working with the framework, this is going to be nothing new. And the same thing kind of goes when it comes to working with the classes. We have additional classes. So you can click inside here. Let's make this a little bit wider just to make life a little easier. So you can click inside here and you see there's all our classes. Everything is preceded by .at. So we know that it's an advanced thema CSS framework class. So when you create your own, I would recommend you use some kind of prefix for your own. So for example, you may want to use WP, you may want to use the project name, something that makes sense to you. So you can differentiate between the different variables, the different classes and so on. It's just a good little naming convention to get in the habit of. But as you can see, there's our colors. We can select our colors from here, We've got neutrals and so on. We've got our button sizes and everything. So we can choose our buttons, all predefined. So everything you could want inside your, your line clamps, your marks. We've even got SVG icons available to us inside your as well, which again is quite cool because you can easily add in your own set SVGs. So for example, if you want to add an SVG you want to use over and over again, come into your CSS variable manager, open up the SVG. You can see we've got five inside your arrow check and so on. Just do the same thing. You can simply give it a name and then you can upload that to where you want to have it. And then it's accessible throughout your entire site and you can simply use that variable to reference it. Pretty cool and pretty nifty. So while this video is only just scratching the surface of what this offers, I think the most important thing to take away here is that this is version 1.0. It's a nice, clean, simple, stripped back version of a CSS framework that doesn't necessarily have the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of extra bells and whistles that you may not actually need from a framework. But it gives you the ability to easily expand what's already there, customize what's there, or just give you the ability to get up to speed with how to use a framework for yourself. And then if you want to either expand it, you can do, or if you want to look at alternatives, you can also do that as well. So kudos goes out to Maxim, first of all, for handling the Chrome bug that he's had to spend the entire weekend fixing. So well done for doing that. And also to Alan Blair that's been instrumental in setting up and working with Maxim to get this whole framework up and running. Great work, guys, and I'm really excited to see where this goes. As always, I want to pass the question over to you. Is this something you will look at using yourself? If you are using a framework, would you use this instead? Or if you're new to frameworks, would this kind of get you interested in trying them out and seeing how they work for yourself? Let me have those comments down below in the comment section. As always, all applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.